come to your branch of service, stand, please, so we can we can honor you. Thank you all. <coughs>
choir members, and thank you veterans. Good morning. Good morning. It is good to be back with you. I bring you greetings from our sister congregation, uh, Peace Lutheran in Clifton, Texas. I preached there last Sunday as part of my mission <coughs> responsibilities. Uh, it was great fun. It's a small congregation, but some good life and uh, uh, fun to share with them. I assured them that we would keep them in our prayers as they keep us in theirs. We celebrate a baptism today. Uh, Lorelai Elaine Underwood, the daughter of Keith and Tracy Underwood, will be baptized during this service. Her sponsors are Bradley Dickey and Lauren Underwood. There will be a reception following worship to uh, further the celebration. Please do keep Lorelai and her family in your prayers on this special occasion. And as you've probably seen from the posters around the church, uh, we will be having a blood drive here on Sunday, November 24th. Uh, the drive will be in honor of Dorothy Williams, who's worked very hard on many drives over many years. The theme for the blood drive is Give Thanks, Give Blood, which is a real great focus as we approach Thanksgiving. Uh, please do mark your calendars. You can sign up today. Uh, blood drive on the 24th. High school youth, we're meeting tonight at 6 o'clock for dinner in our Bible study. Uh, and we've begun our annual November food drive. There are items listed in the bulletin. We ask you to bring the items to church and then leave them here at the front of the church. We've got that started already. Uh, we do that every year. It's a reminder that our offerings <coughs> for those in need are also offerings to God. And as you're reading through your bulletin, a couple of inserts to call to your attention. One is the one on a false stewardship. Please do read over that. And then the other is the take home family study for Sunday school. Uh, we're, we're tying in our Sunday school with our worship, with home activities. Uh, families, please do make use of a take-home study. Well, again, welcome. Good to have everyone here as we share this time together. Let's begin our service. Please stand as we sing together, Be Thou My Vision.
Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by dint of I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord.
congregation, please uh, follow along in your bulletin insert. When we baptize, we uh, as a congregation make commitments. We all have a role. Uh, and children, please watch this very closely because after the baptism, we've got a children's sermon, and we're going to talk about baptisms. You watch and see what happens, okay? We celebrate baptism. In holy baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us in the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen man. In the waters of baptism, we are reborn children of God and characters of eternal life. By water and the Spirit, we are made members of the Church, which is the body of Christ. As we live with Him and with His people, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. We present Lord Lion and Wayne Underwood to receive the sacrament of holy baptism. In Christian love, you have presented this child for holy baptism. You should therefore faithfully bring her to the services of God's house and teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. As she grows in years, you should place in her hands the Holy Scripture and provide for her instruction in the Christian faith. That living in the covenant of her baptism and in communion with the Church, she may lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ. Do you promise to fulfill these obligations? Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give me thanks and praise. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we give you thanks for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and you created heaven and earth. By the gift of water you nourish and sustain us in all living things. By the waters of the flood you condemn the wicked and save those whom you had chosen, Noah and his family. You led Israel by a pillar of cloud and fire through the sea, out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan your son was baptized by John and anointed with the spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection. Your beloved Son has set us free from the bondage to sin and death, and has opened the way to the joy and freedom of everlasting life. He made water a sign of the kingdom and of cleansing and rebirth. In obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit, so that she who is here baptized may be given new life. Wash away the sin of all who are cleansed by this water, and bring them forth of the characters as your glorious kingdom. To you be given praise and honor and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith in the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty. Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, my I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> and by the way, that is Lorelai adding her Amen. <laughs> Shall we pray? God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for freeing your sons and daughters from the power of sin and for raising them up to a new life through this holy sacrament. <laughs> Pour your Holy Spirit upon Lorelai, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Amen. Lorelai, you are a child of God. You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit, and you've been marked by the cross of Christ's birth. We light a candle during baptism to proclaim the new life, the new life that begins in the sacrament.
Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And our quilters have begun making quilts for everyone we baptize. Uh, they're absolutely gorgeous. We give them to the baptismal party family uh, with a prayer that you be wrapped in the warmth of the quilt and, and the warmth of the love of our God. Shall we pray? O oh God, the giver of all life, look with kindness upon the father and mother of this child. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you've given them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness for Lorelei. Strengthen them in their own baptisms so that you may share eternally, they may share eternally with Lorelei the salvation you have given through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Through baptism, God has made this new sister a member of the priesthood we all share in Christ Jesus we may proclaim the praise of God and bear his creative and redeeming word to all the world. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, a child of the same Heavenly Father, and worker with us in the kingdom of God. dangerous part. <laughs> it is with great joy that I introduce to you your newest sister in Christ, Lorelei Underwood. Miss Lorelei Underwood.
continue with the children's sermon. Uh, so if you would stay up here, if there's other children in the congregation, come on, join us. <coughs> Can I stand back here today? There we go. Come on, Annabelle. Here we go. Good morning. How is everybody? You did very good on the singing. Thank you. That was wonderful. Did you all watch the baptism? Did you all watch? I love doing baptisms. Baptisms are really cool. I, I get to pour water on the child's head. You know what happens in baptism? You know what happens in baptism? Yeah, you get wet. You know what else happens? <laughs> baptism is a promise. When we're baptized, God says, you belong to me. When we're baptized, God says, you're my child. I'm going to take care of you, and I'm going to love you forever. Baptism means we belong to God. Tell you what, let's get, can everybody kind of stand around the baptismal font here? Come on, stand up and get a little closer here. Let me show you something. You got to have room for everybody here. This, this is our baptismal font. We'll put the water in here. Come on, can you get up here? Come on, we got room for one more. You're going to stand right over here by me? Perfect. Can you all see? This is the baptismal font. We put the water in here. When we actually <coughs> baptize, I pour water over the person's head and say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then comes my favorite line in the service. I stick my finger back in the water and I make the sign of the cross on the person's forehead. And I say, you are a child of God. You're a child of God. That's what happens in baptism. We become God's children. Well, what I want to do today is a little reminder of that. You've all been baptized. I've been baptized some of you. Yeah. When you were baptized, we did the same thing for you. So I want to do a little reminder of baptism today. Okay? I'm going to say you are a child of God, just like we did in your baptism. Can I start with you since you we baptized your sister? You are a child of God. And you are a child of God. You are a child of God. And Ian, you are a child of God. And 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 you are a child of God. Is that a little funny? And you are a child of God. It did go something. You are a child of God. And you are a child of God. And you are a child of God. And Elliot, you are a child of God. And the whole world of you. Oh, there you go. You are a child of God. <laughs> That's what happens in baptism. We get a little wet, and God says, I love you, and you belong to me forever. Baptisms are really cool. Well, let's share a word of prayer, shall we? Holy Jesus, remind us that we are your children now and always. Remind us of the waters of baptism you claimed us, and let us rejoice that we live in you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, thanks for coming up. You did great.
But God, he has made me a father to Pharaoh, and the Lord of all his house, and ruler over all of the land of Egypt. Hurry, go up to my father, say to him. Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me. You and your children, and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all the truth is. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Jeff Benjamin's neck and wept while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them, and after that his brothers talked to him. When the report was heard in Pharaoh's house, Joseph's brothers had come. Pharaoh and his servants were pleased. Pharaoh said to Joseph, go to your brothers. Do this. Load your animals and go back to the land of Canaan. Take your father and your households and come to me, that I may give you the best of the land of Egypt, and you may be there to that of the land. You are further charged to say, do this. Take wagons from the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives, and bring your father and come. Give no thought to your possessions, for the best of all the land of Egypt is yours. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said to them, 
Those who belong to this age marry and are given in marriage. But for those who are considered worthy of a place in that age and in the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. Indeed, they cannot die anymore because they are like angels and are children of God, being children of the resurrection. And the fact that the dead are raised, Moses himself showed in the story about the bush where he speaks of the God of the Lord as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Now God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. For to him all of them are alive. The Gospel of the Lord. Joseph perceives that there's a famine coming. 
And so he has Egypt store up all this food and grain, and when the famine comes, they're ready for it. So Joseph becomes very powerful. Well, the famine is not only in Egypt, it's also back in Israel where Joseph's family is. The family is starving, and Jacob tells the brothers, go to Egypt, because it's food there. And so they go to Egypt to ask for food. They end up in the presence of Joseph. Now, they don't recognize Joseph. They figure Joseph has been dead for years, and he's all decked out as a powerful Egyptian, so they don't recognize him. Joseph recognizes them. And the next few chapters of the book, Joseph kind of toys with his brothers. He tests them and he pushes them. And so he accuses them of being spies and he asks questions about the family because he knows a whole lot about the family. And when he gives them grain, he puts their money back in their grain bags and he takes some of his objects and he puts them in the grain bags and he makes one of the brothers stay with him. He just does a whole lot of testing. And finally, finally, in today's story, Joseph tells his brothers the truth. He says, I am Joseph, your brother. And he breaks down and he weeps and he forgives them. And he tells his brothers, I, I know you meant evil for all this, but God meant it for good. And so I forgive you. Uh, there's more years of famine to come, and so please bring the whole family to Egypt and stay here, and, 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 and I'll take care of you. And it becomes a, a marvelous story of a forgiveness and reconciliation, and then the family is united and cared for under, under the grace of Joseph. So it's a marvelous story. And, and I think the main theme of the story is forgiveness. Forgiveness. We are a people who are called to forgive. It's a basic part of our Christian faith. To follow Jesus Christ means we forgive. Well, why do we forgive? Why is forgiveness so important? A couple of reasons. First and foremost, Jesus tells us to. I mean, it kind of settles the matter right there. Jesus tells us to. And what Jesus says is, if I have forgiven you, how can you not forgive each other? So forgiveness becomes uh, an item that's mandated by God. To be Christian means we have to forgive. I think God in his wisdom knew that, that forgiveness has a remarkable ability to set free. Forgiveness sets free. You see, when we can't forgive someone, when we're caught up in our own anger, it binds the other person, it destroys the relationship, and it binds us. Did you ever notice that? When we really hate someone, we get all bound up and caught up in that. And the wonder of forgiveness that it sets everybody free. It sets the other person free. It allows the relationship to be restored. And it frees us up, up to be about life again. The wonder of forgiveness is that it frees you. We're called to forgive. Basic part of our faith. Now, let me be careful to say that does not mean it's an easy thing to do. That does not mean it's an easy thing to do. We know we are forgive, hard to forgive. The problem is, is it's tough. It's hard. In fact, I think that's a big part of the Joseph story. You know, we read the Joseph story where Joseph is testing his brothers, and we always interpret that as saying, well, Joseph wants to see if his brothers are honest men, and I think that's part of it. I think the flip side of that is Joseph is also testing himself to see if he really can forgive these guys. And, and, and you, you get in the story kind of a push-pull that Joseph wants to forgive him, and then he decides he can't, and he wants to forgive him, and he spends about six chapters trying to figure out if he really can forgive him. Understanding 
I don't know that we always forget. I, I think a better way of understanding, and I'm borrowing this uh, from a, a Catholic priest and author named Henry Alwyn. Now, now one's analogy is when a bone breaks, you know, if you break an arm, when a bone breaks and it heals up, the break is actually stronger than the rest of the bone. Did you know that? I, I, I know that to correct me afterwards if, if that's not true. But if you break a bone, uh, it's actually stronger than the rest of the bone. Uh, now, you, you can always see the break. You know, you take an x-ray for the next however many years, you can always tell that the break was there. But it's actually stronger than the rest of the bone is. And I thought, isn't that a great understanding of forgiveness? Whether or not we forget, the fact that we've been able to forgive and continue on with the relationship means the relationship is even stronger. We've been able to work it through, and that strengthens ultimately the relationship. And I think that's particularly true in, in, in the intimate relationships of life, family, marriage. When, when we can work it through and forgive each other, the relationship is actually strengthened because we come through it together. Love that view of forgiveness. Well, we are called to forgive. It's part of our Christian journey. It's part of God's gift of life. Amen. Please stand and sing together our next hymn.
As people redeemed by God and given new life by the risen Christ, let us pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy God, we pray that we would, you would lead us always to rejoice in you. Give to us that joy that comes only from your heart. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for the church that through its proclamation and witness we may be a lamp of hope for all who live in darkness and despair. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for those who serve in elected office. Guide our leaders with your hand and lead them in your grace. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those without food or shelter or clothing and for those whose spirits are broken. May your light give them hope. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for those living with illness or who face the turmoils of life. We remember especially the friends and the family of John Grant, and we ask that you comfort them. We pray for Frank McManamy and John Pauley. Encourage us all by your promises, Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for this congregation, that we may seek your wisdom, live with our eyes open, and be watchful and alert to the signs of your grace in our world and in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us now, Holy Lord, as we pray together the prayer which you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Just a reminder, Sunday School students and teachers, uh, please do leave during the first verse of the last game. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.